Welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido, and this week, we're visiting the beautiful northern Nevada desert surrounding the town of Elko. We'll explore the Ruby Mountains, an abandoned tungsten mine, Ruby Lake National Wildlife Refuge, the ghost town of Metropolis, a high elevation glacial lake, and even soak in some positively perfect remote hot springs. So stay tuned. This episode of Grand Adventure is sponsored by The Dirt Pro. Find the campsite that's right for you from over 44,000 listings, either on the web or on their number one ranked mobile app. Try all of the pro features free for 90 days by using the promo code GRANDADVENTURE90. Let's start by acknowledging that there's really not much that's special about Elko. With a population of a little more than 20,000, it's a stop along I-80 in northern Nevada, with an economy heavily based on gold mining. Even today, the state of Nevada produces more gold than all but four countries, and most of the gold from Nevada is mined near Elko. Instead, from our perspective, the reason to visit Elko is to see what's around Elko. And our primary point of interest for coming here is Lamoille Canyon which extends deep into the remote 11,000-foot peaks of the Ruby Mountains that have been famously dubbed the Swiss Alps of Nevada. Unbeknownst to us, prior to our arrival, a series of storms in the beginning of August caused landslides that destabilized the Lamoille Canyon Road, and the road has remained closed for evaluation and repair ever since. So while our visit to Lamoille Canyon will have to await a return visit, we're left to explore many other sites in the area surrounding Elko. There's only one other road that enters the Ruby Mountains, and that crosses the southern end of the range at Harrison Pet. The peaks in this part of the Rubies are lower elevation and far more rounded than in the area surrounding Lamoille Canyon, but it's no less beautiful. From the top of the pass, we're going to take a brief excursion up this national forest road to the trailhead for the Ruby Mountain Crest, a 34-mile backpacking route that follows the spine of the Ruby Mountains through the Ruby Mountain Wilderness Area, all the way north to the head of Lamoille Canyon. Although high-clearance four-wheel drive is absolutely essential, the rock formations along this road are nothing short of stunning. On the east side of Harrison Pass, travelers will come across the overgrown remains of the Star Mine, where tungsten was last extracted from the hillsides in the 1940s. Although it's a desert, the Ruby Valley along the east side of the Ruby Mountains contains a vast network of wetlands. 
Interestingly, water has no exit from the Ruby Valley. Once the bed of a 200 foot deep lake, it is now a network of spring fed marshes and shallow ponds, serving as a habitat for hundreds of species of native and migratory birds and mammals in the Ruby Lake National Wildlife Refuge established in 1938. While visiting the Elko area, we're staying with our Salt Lake City friends, Dale and Pat, about 20 minutes south of town at South Fork State Recreation Area, part of the Nevada State Park System. This was formerly the site of the Tamara Ranch, which was sold to the state in 1983. The reservoir was created with construction of the South Fork Dam, an impoundment of, on the South Fork of the Humboldt River completed in 1988 known for its trophy-class trout and bass fishing. Here in the East Campground, you'll find 25 electric campsites overlooking the reservoir in a single loop, with water hydrants scattered about and a dump station located adjacent to the park headquarters. All sites are first come, first served. Flush toilets and showers are available as well. Sites here cost $25 per night, plus a $5 per night surcharge for out-of-state residents. Surprisingly, the campground was never much more than half full during our stay, even on the weekend. From here, we'd normally enjoy stunning views of the Ruby Mountains to our east. Not so this week, however, thanks to the smoke drifting over from the Caldor and Dixie wildfires in California. Across the lake, two more camping loops provide additional dry campsites, lining the lakeshore at Coyote Cove and Jet Ski Beach. With the water's edge right outside our door, it's impossible to resist the lure of getting our kayak out onto the water. We went to sleep each night at South Fork to the beautiful yet haunting sound of countless coyotes howling and wailing to each other in the distance. You'll find South Fork State Recreation Area and over 1 million other campsites, reviews and tips at our video sponsor, The Dirt. Pro members even get the ability to search for a campsite while outside of cell service or Wi-Fi range, as well as trip routing, public land map layers, 
and campground and camping gear discounts. Best of all, our Grand Adventurers get to try all of the pro features free for 90 days just by using the promo code GRANDADVENTURE90. Click on the link down below in the video description to try the Dirt Pro for free today. Looking at the wildfire smoke forecast for tomorrow, I'm optimistic that we may well be slightly north of the sharp demarcation line denoting clear air. Sure enough, we've lucked out. We can now catch a glimpse of the Ruby Mountains from camp, and it's obvious that the heavier portion of the smoke plume is now sitting just to our south. This is the first blue sky we've seen in weeks. This provides the perfect opportunity today to travel to a couple of points of interest surrounding the nearby town of Wells. Wells is another exit along I-80 in northern Nevada, about a half hour's drive northeast of Elko. It was founded as a railroad town along the original Transcontinental Railroad. It was once a stopover for passenger trains. We're heading out across the barren desert, 12 miles northwest of Wells, to see the remains of the optimistically named Metropolis, now a ghost town, where at one time bad luck changed for the worse. During the early 20th century, many homesteaders attempted to farm in the Great Basin. Creating the town of Metropolis was the project of businessman Harry Pierce of Leominster, Massachusetts, and of investors from both Massachusetts and Salt Lake City. His company purchased 40,000 acres of desert land in 1910 and built a dam on Bishop Creek, 15 miles to the east, to provide for irrigation. The company marketed the new town site heavily around Salt Lake City and built an amusement hall, a post office, school, a train depot, and a magnificent modern hotel, complete with an electric generator, central heating, and hot and cold running water in every room. A railroad spur was extended to the town site and regular passenger service began in 1912. The population grew to nearly 700. Superficially, the town seemed like a success, but Pierce had failed to obtain water rights to Bishop Creek, and the downstream town of Lovelock sued to prevent the impoundment of water behind the dam. Because residents could not irrigate, many tried dry farming wheat, successfully at first, thanks to several unusually wet seasons. After settlers killed marauding coyotes, the jackrabbit population rose dramatically and they ate all of the wheat. When rainfall levels returned to normal, the town was invaded by an infestation of Mormon crickets. The town company declared bankruptcy in 1920. The railroad discontinued service in 1922 and people left. By 1950, Metropolis was a ghost town. And today, all that remains are the cemetery and ruins of the hotel and school. We're heading upstream along Bishop Creek, the same stream dammed by the Metropolis developers, to a little bit of r, r at 12 Mile Hot Springs. It seems that a bunch of cattle have the same idea. Four-wheel drive is necessary to reach the springs, and those without can hike in the two miles from the county road. These springs are located in a narrow canyon on private land, although the owner has graciously allowed visitors to soak in the primitive pools 40 feet long and 3 feet deep. The source is about 105 degrees, and depending on the season, the hot springs average around 100 degrees, the perfect temperature for this time of year. We found only a handful of others enjoying the springs on this beautiful Saturday.
In the distance, that's the East Humboldt Range, south of Wells. Before leaving the Wells area, we'd like to catch a glimpse of Angel Lake, one of the most popular recreation sites in the area, nestled in the north end of the range. Angel Lake is a beautiful glacial tarn at an elevation of 8,378 feet. The lake itself is available for fishing in non-motorized watercraft. On its shore is a 26-site campground and an 11-site picnic area. RV travelers should know, however, that State Route 231 that accesses Angel Lake is very steep, following numerous switchbacks along its 12-mile length. We can't recommend it for travel trailers, fifth wheels, or motorhomes. So we truly hope that you've enjoyed visiting the area surrounding beautiful Elko in northern Nevada with us. If you like this episode, please be sure to give us a big thumbs up down below. And while you're down below, we'd love to hear from you in the comments section. We'd be honored if you shared the channel with your friends, family, and on social media. But if you're not yet a Grand Adventurer, this is the perfect time to go smash that little red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen and ring that notification bell to be sure that you come along on each and every grand adventure. So until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.